Yes, a pleasant good night. It's actually night. It's about the 11 o'clock hour at night. Welcome back to Nita's channel. And yes, I'm about kind of sleepy right now. But I got to read the word of God. So I'm going to take you guys on this journey of me reading the word of God. I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're going to read all of chapter 11. Right, okay. So this one is a bit different. I'm taking you on a scripture reading tonight. Okay. Now as we begin to read. Imitate me. Just as I also imitate Christ. Now I praise you brethren. That you remember me. In all things. And keep the tradition. Just as I deliver them to you. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. As I read that again. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the tradition just as I deliver them to you. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head cover, dishonor his head. But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, dishonors her head. But that is one and the same as if her head were shaved. For if a woman is not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it is shameful for a woman to be shorn or shaved, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and the glory of God. But woman is the glory of man. For man is not from woman, but woman from man. Yeah, we be we wondering, okay, what does that mean? Hey, for man is from for man is not from woman, from woman, but woman from man. Because when you think about it, when it comes to pregnancy. A woman cannot get pregnant on her own. Yes, Mary got pregnant, but the Holy Spirit came upon her and granted her ability to give birth to Jesus. And as it goes with pregnancy, a woman in the natural cannot get pregnant on her own. It takes the ability of the man's sperm to enter into the woman to cause a child barren stage to happen inside of her. Yes, the woman give birth to the child but all of that came from the formation of man for a man indeed ought not to cover his head since he is the image and the glory of God but woman is the glory of man for man is not from woman but woman from man nor was man created for the woman but woman for the man for this reason, the woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head. Because of the angel, nevertheless, neither is man independent of woman, nor woman independent of man. In the Lord, for as woman came from man, even so man also comes true woman. Now you hear the difference? Man also comes true woman. Mm -hmm. For as woman came from man, by the seed, the sperm of a man, even so man also come through woman. The man had to come through the woman in order to get in the world, huh? That's something. For as woman come from man, even so man also come through woman. But all things are from God. Judge among yourselves. Is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered? Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man has long hair, it is a dishonor to him? But if a woman has long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given to her for a covering. But if anyone seems to be contentious, we have no such custom, nor do the churches of God. Now in giving these instructions, I do not praise you. Since you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, 
I hear that there are division among you, and in part I believe it. For there must also be faction among you, that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you, for I receive from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eat this bread or drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Let's read that again. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord God. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment. And the rest I will set in order when I come. There ends that scripture reading. And that's 1 Corinthians chapter 11. So we read the whole chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians and all what it was basically talking about. Talking about the Lord's Supper and so on. And how when we take the Lord's Supper, you know, you examine yourself. If there any wrong fault that you have done. You did anyone wrong, you go before God and you ask God for forgiveness. You don't know, want to take the Lord's Supper with guilt on your conscience or with you wronging someone in the, in the heart. Because we're doing certain, doing this as a remembrance of Christ. Of Christ that he died upon the cross for our sake. For our sakes that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. And one thing that I know and the word of God teaches the word of God is power. And as you read the word of God, you begin to get more acknowledgement of who God really is and what God is actually capable of. You know, sometimes we aren't able to talk about certain biblical things because we don't have enough word in us. And all of this is a learning experience for each and every one of us. Some person may not have time to pick up the Bible and to read the Word of God. But come on, somebody, the Word of God is power. And as you read the Word of God, situations begin to line up. You understand, whatever the enemy made for bad, you got to understand that God turned it around for our good. The enemy does not like when we read the Word of God or read God's Word. Because that puts him in a defeating position. And in this season, it's time to defeat the enemy. The enemy is defeated. And we got to understand that the word of God says that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. And that's why we got to read the word of God on a daily basis. Constantly can seek the face of God. Even if you can't 
read the word of God on a daily basis. And like I was saying, if you have a channel, a gospel channel that you can listen to, to hear a God's word, go ahead, go on that channel and listen to God's word. If you have someone that can encourage you, go ahead and listen to God's word. And we're going to stop right here tonight. And we'll be back on tomorrow with some more encouraging word of God. And I just want to tell each and every one of you, I am so thankful to have you listening to me speak on God's word on a day-to-day basis and to learn more and more about me and this channel here at Nita's channel. Everyone have a good and blessed night. We'll be back tomorrow, God's will.